Welcome. My name is Josh Almeida, and I am very excited to bring to you our latest installment of Focus on Learning, brought to you by New Bedford Public Schools and New Bedford Cable Network. While the best way to find out what your child could be doing at home is to work directly with your child's teacher in school, we know these videos will help everyone keep learning active at home. Hi everybody, my name is Mrs. Furtado. I am a grade three teacher at Gomes School and I'm gonna be teaching you a mini lesson about fractions. As third graders, one of the standards that we need to learn is naming fractions or identifying fractions and figuring out how to create fractions from the world around us. So today I'm gonna to be using some simple objects that you've probably seen in your classroom. These are our materials and I have some other shapes here in front of me. We're gonna quickly review the geometric names of these shapes and then we're gonna use them to identify fractions. So anybody can determine a fraction part of a number or of a shape but you need to know one thing first. You need to know what the whole is. And so the whole could be just about anything. It could be a whole person. It could be a whole bus of students on a field trip. It could be a whole dollar. Or it could be a whole shape. So today we're going to be working with this hexagon, a yellow hexagon. And that yellow hexagon is going to be our whole. So once we know that that is our whole shape, we can start to break it down into smaller equal parts, okay? So I'm gonna use this yellow hexagon as our starting point, okay? And I'm gonna slide over this whiteboard because a fraction, when we write them or name them, has two parts. It has a numerator and it has a denominator. The numerator is the number that goes on top of our fraction bar right there and the denominator is the number that goes on the bottom of our fraction bar. So when we have a whole like this, we wouldn't really call this a fraction because it is our whole hexagon. It's a whole shape, okay? So we would call this one whole, and we would write it just like that, okay? Now if I want to begin to break this down into fractional parts, I'm going to need to use my numerator and my denominator in order to identify that. Okay, so I'm going to put a new shape on top of this hexagon. This is actually a four-sided red shape, and we call this shape a trapezoid. Okay, it has four sides. It has one set of parallel lines. This top line and this bottom line are parallel, and it is called a trapezoid when it looks like this. So if you notice when I lay this trapezoid on top of the hexagon, it's taking up one half of the whole hexagon. So I'm gonna use this as a pointer here. This red trapezoid is one half. There's one half left. It's two equal parts, okay? So I'm gonna use this numerator and denominator to write a new name for this red trapezoid. We could call it a red trapezoid, but if we're asking for the fractional name, we wanna be able to come up with a numerator and a denominator to identify that. So your numerator represents always what you have, okay? So if we look at this shape that we've built, this red trapezoid is what we have. So how are we gonna name that? Well, we have one red trapezoid. So that one is going to become my numerator. And what I need to identify for my denominator is how many pieces of this trapezoid would I need to cover the whole hexagon. So for this, I'm going to grab another red trapezoid and prove to you that two of those red trapezoids do in fact make one whole hexagon. Okay, so I would need two red trapezoids to make one whole. Okay, so let's get back to our fraction. We have one red trapezoid. We want to know for our denominator, our denominator tells us how many of these do we need to make a whole. And the answer is we need two of those red trapezoids in order to make a whole hexagon. So we have just named this red fraction or this red trapezoid as one half of the whole hexagon. Okay, so now let's take a look at that. 
we're pretty familiar with halves of things, okay? If you're sharing with your brothers and sisters and you have to share half of a candy bar, we know that we want to make sure that we and our sister both get equal parts. Does this look like an equal part? Those are in fact the same two red trapezoids, okay? So when we look at this, because of what we already know about one half, it makes sense that we have one trapezoid that is named as one half. So now we're going to try this again, still using our yellow hexagon as our whole, but we're going to use some different shapes to identify some new fractions, okay? So I'm going to grab these brown shapes, okay? And I'm going to fill them in on top of this hexagon so that you can see just how many of them we need to make a whole hexagon. We've got to flip them all the right way so that they take up the same exact shape. There you go. So you can see right now in this model with our pattern blocks that I have four brown of shapes. Do you know what these shapes are called? Let's take a closer look at them. So I see four sides. One, two, three, four. I'm also noticing that they look pretty similar to the red trapezoid that we just used. Look at that. This is a brown quadrilateral. It doesn't have a special name, so any four-sided shape is called a quadrilateral. Squares, rectangles, trapezoids could also be a quadrilateral, and this is going to be the brown quadrilateral, okay? So you can see that it takes four of these brown quadrilaterals whoops, to make a whole hexagon. If the hexagon is our whole, which we identified earlier, okay, what is one of these brown quadrilaterals? Let's see, okay? All right, so we've got one brown quadrilateral, one whole hexagon, okay? And if we think back to what we did over here to make a numerator and a denominator, our numerator identifies what we have, and I'm going to write that over here just to remind us of that. And the bottom is how many we need to make a whole. So think about that. Look at that model. How many brown quadrilaterals do we have? We have one. So my numerator is going to be one. Now we need to think back to what I did at the beginning when I used those brown quadrilaterals and I filled up that entire whole hexagon. How many of those did we need in order to make the whole yellow hexagon? Do you remember? We needed four. So this brown quadrilateral actually represents one-fourth of our whole yellow hexagon. We have one out of four. Now I'm going to challenge you a little bit. If I grab another brown quadrilateral and I add it to this model, we no longer have one-fourth. What number changes? Do we still have four of those brown quadrilaterals that we need to make a whole? That doesn't change. But our numerator will change. How many of these brown quadrilaterals do we now have in this model? We have two. So the numerator is going to change depending on how many you have. Your denominator, when you're sticking with the same shape, in this case brown quadrilaterals, is not going to change. Ready to try it again with a different shape? All right, so we're going to keep our hole as our yellow hexagon. That is not going to change. But I am going to bring up these. All right, so as I put these down onto the hexagon, see if you can figure out what the name of this shape is. Okay? It has four sides. So it is a quadrilateral like our last one, but it doesn't look like a trapezoid or the brown quadrilateral that we just worked with. What I do notice about this shape is that all the sides are parallel. They have parallel pairs. This is a parallelogram. And if you notice in this model, we need three blue parallelograms to create one whole hexagon. All right, now I'm going to take two of them away. But remember how many that we needed to make our whole, because that's where we get our denominator from. How many blue parallelograms do we have in this model? Right now, we have one. 
So our numerator is 1. How many of those blue parallelograms did we need to create a whole hexagon shape? Well, I'll remind you. When we assemble them just like that, you can see that it matches right on top of the hexagon and it perfectly creates a hexagon with three blue parallelograms. So when we have one of these, it is actually one third of the whole hexagon. We have one blue rhombus out of three to make the whole. That is one third. This blue parallelogram represents one third of our whole. Pretty simple, right? Now, again, I'm gonna add one more just so you can get the hang of this because once you know what your whole is, it's really rather easy to create new fractions, all right? So, we're still using blue parallelograms, okay? How many do we have in the model right now? I see one third, I see two thirds. So our fraction here is two thirds. When we have two of them, we would have two thirds. Now we're gonna keep doing this and practicing it because it's really important. You can cr actually find fractions or create fractions with just about anything. You don't need special models like this. How about if I bring over some smaller pieces here, okay? As I'm filling this hexagon in, see if you can identify the name of this green shape. So if you notice, it took one, two, three, four, five, six of these green shapes to fill in our whole hexagon. Now think about what we've been doing with fractions. If I take all of them away and there's just one left, what fraction is that green shape of the whole? And do you know what shape this is? It's a triangle, but it's a special type of triangle. It's actually an equilateral triangle because all three sides are equal in length. If I were to take out a ruler and measure each side, they would all be equal, okay? So, how many do I have? Right now on the board, we have one equilateral triangle. How many do I need to create this whole hexagon? Well, I had counted them earlier. I needed six total to create one whole hexagon. So this green equilateral triangle ap actually represents one sixth of our whole, okay? Now, little challenge, what if I bring back some more? Okay, take a look at the existing fraction we had. When we only had one green equilateral triangle, we had one sixth. We're still using six because we're still using those green equilateral triangles, but I have more on the board now. So take a look at the model. How many do we have? One is one sixth, two sixths, three sixths. And keep in mind, your numerator is always what you have. I have three green equilateral triangles out of six that I would need to make the whole. So this fraction that you're viewing right there is three sixths of our whole hexagon. Now, if you're starting to make some connections, your brain is probably right. That three six takes up the same area as one red trapezoid. And if you remember at the beginning of this mini lesson, we called that one half. Fractions sometimes have the different names for the same area. So this three six that we have is also the same as one half. Three six and one half are equivalent fractions. We're gonna try one more. Now, this one's really tricky because they're very, very tiny, all right? But I'm gonna lay one on top right here. And you're gonna have to take my word on this one because putting a whole bunch of those onto this, this hexagon are a little tricky, okay? So, when I use this purple triangle, this purple triangle is actually a right triangle. You can see at the angle that I'm pointing to, it forms a complete right angle. So this is called a purple right triangle. I would need 12 
purple right triangles to fill in this whole hexagon, all right? So my denominator is now 12. I'm working with 12s. And this little triangle represents 1 12th of our whole hexagon, okay? So 1 12th looks like this, right? Now, those are all the shapes in our pattern block kit, but you can create fractions very easily at home. Think about the things that you can break up into equal parts, okay? One of the things that you need to remember with our model that I used here is that all the brown quadrilaterals were the same size. All the red trapezoids were the same size. All the blue parallelograms were equal, okay? When you challenge your brothers and sisters or your families at home with some fractions, take a look at things that you have in your home that you have equal pieces of. You could break up a chocolate bar. You could use fractions in measurement if you're helping mom in the kitchen, cooking dinner or baking. But you need to remember when you begin, what is my whole? So if I'm baking in the kitchen with mom and I'm using cups to measure dry or wet ingredients, my whole is a cup and I can break that down into halves, thirds, sixths, just like we just did here with the model. So today I challenge you at home to find some fractions in your world around you. I hope you've learned how to create a fraction by using the numerator and denominator to identify what you have and what is the whole. And once you do that, you'll be on your way to creating fractions in your own home. Thanks for watching. Bye.